Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. We are continuing to study in Unit 3 in our summer quarter of Sunday School Lessons. Unit 3 is entitled Faith and Wisdom in James. Have you responded to someone in anger and said something you wish you could take back? Yes, I'm sure we all have at some point in our lives. In this week's lesson, James is teaching practical life applications on having self-control, listening, and knowing when to speak. Get your Sunday School book, Bible, notepad, pen, or device, and follow along as we begin our review of this lesson. Let's get started. The lesson title for this week, August the 9th, is Talk is Cheap, and that's the title in the adult book. And Hearing and Doing the Word is the title in the Sunday School Commentary. Our background scripture and lesson text scripture for this week's lesson is James chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. Our key verse for this week's lesson is, Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And that's James chapter 1, verse 22 the New International Version. Now let's consider some questions to reflect on and think on as we go through this week's lesson. Question number one, why is it important to stop and think before speaking or responding? Question number two, how has hearing and following God's Word impacted your life? And question number three, what are some ways that we can put God's Word into practice? Let's take a brief look at the lesson context. We began this quarter in the book of Proverbs, and we are ending it in the book of James. These two books have much in common. The book of James is considered by many to be among the wisdom literature of the Bible, and is noted as probably the oldest book in the New Testament. James was writing to Jewish Christians to encourage them to continue growing in their Christian faith. James emphasized that good actions will naturally flow from those who are filled with the Spirit. James establishes that holiness is the standard for the believer. This week's lesson addresses how we should listen, respond to others, and deal with anger. This is such a timely lesson with a timely message. With so much anger, hostility, hate, bitterness, and rage all around us, this lesson is very, very timely and important. This lesson also teaches us not to just hear the word, but to be doers of the word. James says Christians ought to respond and act differently because we have God's wisdom to guide us and to help us. The lesson aims for this week's lesson. As a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Lesson aim number one, understand that the proof of wisdom is not merely in what one says, but in what one does especially in what one does for those who are in need. Lesson aim number two, feel compassion for those who are most vulnerable and desire to act on their behalf. And lesson aim number three, engage in ministry that demonstrates a religion that is pure and undefiled before God. As we continue our glimpse into this week's lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. 
There are three outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book in this week's lesson. Outline number one is quick, slow. Outline number two is doers, not listeners. And outline number three is real religion. Do you find yourself talking over people and not actively listening to what they are saying? Or are you thinking about how you're going to respond instead of actively listening? How many times have you heard the saying or have used the saying yourself, think before you speak? This is what James is saying in this week's lesson. Key point number one, believers are to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. The word anger in verse 1 represents the hurtful words people shout out at others when they are angry. It is the deep negative emotions that build up, bruise, and simmers within us that is directed toward the person or persons talking to us. Wisdom teaches us to carefully listen to what others say to the point of placing ourselves in their shoes to fully consider their point of view. When we listen and are slow to speak, this gives us time to process our response after we have fully considered what the other person or persons has or have said. If we take time to really listen and pause before we speak, we'll be slow to become angry. As stated in the Faith Pathway Adult Sunday School book, when we are slow to listen and quick to speak, it is easy for us to fly off the handle. Anger is not one of the nine characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. James made it clear that anger does not, cannot produce the righteousness that God desires. Key point number two, bitterness, anger, clamor, evil speech, and any type of moral filth that keeps us from being holy before God are to be rejected and replaced with kindness, tenderheartedness, and forgiveness. James is saying that we need to rid ourselves of these things, those things that keeps us from being holy before God. The second outline is doers, not just listeners. And that's James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. Key point number one, Christians are not to just hear the word, but to do what the word says do. While it is important to listen to what God says, and this is very important, it is also important to obey his word and to do what the word says. In this passage, James stresses the importance of believers hearing and doing the word. In verses 23 to 25, James used an illustration of looking into a mirror to provide further emphasis on being doers of the word. Key point number two, hearers only are like people who look at themselves in a mirror, but since they are not focused on what they see, can't remember what they saw. In contrast, those who concentrate on what they see in the mirror represent those who are doers of the word. As believers, we must receive, obey, value, and follow the word of God. The third outline is real religion, and that's James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Many of us have gotten ourselves in some bad situations simply because we spoke without thinking. Once words leave our mouth, we cannot take them back. They are out there. As we know, the tongue can do so much damage. Key point number one. It is important that we strongly consider what we are going to say before we say it. 
before speaking or responding, ask, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? And pray for wisdom and ask the Holy Spirit to intervene. Key point number two, James gives examples of true religion at work. He says our religion is at work when we minister to the needy like orphans and widows and when we live lives that are not corrupted by the world. We are to care for and help those in need. When we do this, we are putting God's word into practice. We're called out people. We're not to adapt to the world's value system, but to God's system. We are to be different. God wants us to be different from the world. We don't want people to wonder whether we are Christians or not. In summary, today's lesson had a strong focus on being doers of the word. It is not enough to hear and receive God's word we must respond to his word. It shows up in our actions and how we live. Don't talk about it, be about it. Don't talk the talk, but walk the walk. We are to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Our lives are on display. We must watch what we say, when we say it, and how we say it. Remember, once we say it, it's out there. In this lesson, James calls his readers to practice true religion by helping those in need and the vulnerable. In closing, thank you for tuning in to this week's Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of the lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to teach and study God's Word. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. We invite you to join us each week as we take a glimpse into the Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.